So the question being asked is can we upload files with Selenium? Yes, you can do that. Hold on, I'll just show you. How can you upload files? Yeah, suppose uh, this, this is only the code for the file upload button. Input type equals to file, name equals to file upload. Okay, so this, this brings out this whole thing. Okay, so if you are using Firefox, for example, I'll make a new file called as file upload. Okay, and we write over here web driver driver equals to new. Okay, and uh, Deepak, the question which you were asking me, okay, I will cover that, but I'll cover that later on, not in these modules. First, I'll just show you the basics of WebDriver. Okay, so after that, I will take you to those examples as well. Right, so this is the WebDriver object, and you write over here a driver dot get the URL. Suppose I need to go to this URL. And I need to upload the file. Okay. If you look this at this URL, I'll talk about Firefox profiling in some time. Just hold on. Okay. Let me answer this question first about the file uploading. Now, suppose I need to upload this in Firebug then this element has got this thing okay and uh, this has got this xpath okay i use the absolute xpath in this case later on we'll devise our own custom xpath so in this case i'm just using the absolute xpath which you should not be using i'll write that driver dot find element by the xpath this is the xpath okay dot send keys you directly name the file it will work if you for example I select the file C drive 10, say test.xls file. I need to upload this file. Okay, so I directly write the path here that is C drive 10 test.xls. Make sure it's a valid path. Okay, test.xls. In Java, when you have to give double. Uh, in, you have to give path, you have to write double slash. Okay, so when you run this code now, you go ahead and you see that this gets written over here. Okay, so this also gets written over here if I select some other file right so that's how you know that's how you can upload the file okay similar thing will also work on chrome and you just need to give the x path and the file upload will work okay you got it fine now let us look at firefox profiling okay let us look at Firefox profiling. Uh, what is a Firefox profile basically? Okay. Uh, it's like in one machine you can you just have one instance of Firefox running, right? But you can actually have uh, multiple instances of Firefox in one machine. Okay. That is, for example, uh, you and uh, your brother is sharing the same machine. Okay. And your brother wants that when he opens up the Firefox, he should see his own set of bookmarks and his own set of settings inside Firefox. But you want that when you open, you should open, you should be able to see your settings of Firefox and your bookmarks and your things inside Firefox basically. So it's like customizing the Firefox as per the user. As per the different users, you can customize the Firefox, and that is known as Firefox profiling. This feature is only available in Firefox. It's not in IE or Chrome. Okay. To create a Firefox profile, 
Okay, the first step which you need to do is you need to close the Firefox from file exit menu. Okay, so you close from here and file exit menu, close it from there. Okay, you go to your run menu and type firefox.exe hyphen p uh, profile manager you will get a window like this ok firefox.exe hyphen p profile manager this is the default profile which is there on your machine if I run this, double click on this, the normal Firefox window will open up. It's got uh, this uh, firebug in it and all everything. Okay. If I close it from file exit menu and open, run this thing again, okay, then you can have this Firefox profile window. Now you can create multiple profiles. I can click on create profile and I can actually name this profile as say temp temporary profile right you click on finish and you will have the temporary profile over here you can start this temporary profile when you start this you will see that this profile will not have any firebug bug in it this profile will not have any bookmarks in it this profile if you look at the history it's got the history that is of this current page only no history at all okay so it's like a fresh browser right and similarly when you run the firefox when you run the firefox driver what firefox driver does is internally it creates its own firefox profile and launches the firefox profile when the script ends it kills that firefox profile it destroys the firefox profile Okay, now sometimes you want that you should be running the script with some particular settings in the browser. That is some proxy settings maybe. Okay, you need to go into tools options and you need to do some proxy settings and run the script. Or especially in case of HTTPS, the secure websites, okay, you want to handle certificate errors in Mozilla then the concept of Firefox profiling comes into picture. You can tell Firefox that open this particular profile which I have already created. Don't open the profile by, like don't open your own profile. Open the one which I created. For example, I'll go to the site gmail.com. and I add this as a bookmark on my website the gmail.com webpage I add it as a bookmark fine and I close this temporary profile okay and I want to open up this profile right through Firefox when I run this Firefox driver I want to open the temp profile which I just created if I just run this code, it will not open the temp profile, it will create a new profile and it will open it up. If you look in the bookmarks, you will not have the bookmark for Gmail. Okay, so how do I open the temp profile? To understand this, you need to understand the concept of constructors in Java. Okay, what is a constructor? Right, uh, suppose I make a class called car and car class has in the name of the car string the model of the car right this has got the name and the model of the car or let's say not in the sorry not in name just the string, string the model of the car okay and I create a class called test car. In test car, I'll create the objects of the car class like this. I'll write car C equals to new car. And I'll write C dot name 
or c dot model equals to model a fine let's name this c1 similarly i create the object of the car class say car c2 equals to new car and i write c2 dot model equals to b okay I have got two car class objects with different models. Fine. Now, what's the drawback over here? The drawback is that every time I create the object, I need to initialize it right in multiple lines. C1 dot model is a, C2 dot model is b. Suppose this car has got hundreds of properties: the model number, the car number, the nameplate number, the engine number, chassis number. There are n number of properties to this car class. Then I'll have to initialize the car class object n number of times with all the properties whenever I create the object. I've just in, taken one property over here. So what's this, what's the solution for this? The solution for this is to have constructors. Okay, to have constructors. What constructor will do? on the fly it will create the object and it will also initialize it with the desired values you don't have to write unnecessary multiple lines after creating the object so out here the object is getting created and with the help of constructors you will actually um, initialize the object at the time of its creation only okay for example i have written new car over here so what I am doing is I am calling the default constructor of the car class which is hidden. Okay, the constructor is made like this. You write like this public car. This is the constructor of the class car. The name is same as the name of the class. Please remember the constructor name is always same as the name of the class and constructor has got no return type like void, int, long, and all anything. So if I write over here System dot out dot print and then hello and I go to my test car dot java and I run my test car dot java what will happen is it will print hello two times why because two objects of the car class are being formed new car is called two times okay if I call create three objects then control will come in the constructor for three times right so what we do is we overload this constructor what do you mean by overloading the same name public car but different arguments now this will take in the model number of the car and I will write over here model equals to M so right now what I do is when I create the car class object car c3 I will I will call the overloaded constructor and I will directly pass the model number into it so c3 object will obviously automatically have the model number c I don't have to initialize it again and again so if you look at this car of constructor over here then this car constructor accepts the model number and it equates the model number like this. Suppose car has got a model number and another property called int weight. Right? So you can pass over two things to this constructor, model number and weight, and you can write over here weight equals to w. Okay? And in the test car class, you can pass over the model number and the weight of the car. So automatically the weight will become equals to 88, model number will become C. You don't have to write unnecessary lines after creating the object. So you create the object and you instantiate the object, you initialize the object at the same line, at the same point. Okay. So this is the car class constructor. Fine. It has the model number and it has the weight. Right. So now, uh, 
in constructors okay let me let me go in a little bit deep right in java there is a this keyword okay if i write over here model and wait complete things right hold on let me go into this test car and write over here system dot out dot print and then c3 dot model and system dot out dot print and then c3 dot wait okay and if you run this code this prints c and 88 okay so this prints c and 88 c is the model number and 88 is the weight of the car fine and if you actually um look in this car object over here right so this thing accepts the string and this thing accepts the int the model is m the weight is w right now if you write over here mod model and weight the local variables name same as the global variables out here i'll get an issue these are the global variables and these are the local variables the name of these variables are same i am writing mod equals to mod and weight equals to weight so when i run this test car now it will print null and zero the car object of our c3 never got initiated why because this way what it is trying to do is it is initializing this local variable to the local variable itself the global variable is getting hidden okay so you use the this keyword over here in java this is the important of this this dot model and this dot weight this means the global variable or the object the property of the object is equal to the local variable model okay so this thing over here points towards the global variable or the object property and this thing is the local variable okay so when you run the car object now test car now so you get c and it Okay. Sometimes in interviews they ask, "What do you mean by this keyword? How it is used in Java and all?" So they might ask you these questions. Okay. So in this, uh, suppose I go back to my file. File uh, this one. Um, say I make a new class called as profiling. now in this class i need to start the firefox browser with a particular profile okay you need to start it with a particular profile fine and you write it over here there is a class known as inbuilt class known as profiles i n i p r o f equals to or you name the object as you create the object of this class profile by n now profile by n i class we import this this class it represents all the firefox profiles in your machine okay from this you will get you need to extract you write profiles ini dot get profile temp you extract the temporary profile and you take it in the object of a class called firefox profile firefox profile is a inbuilt class again okay so you extract the profile tem and you just need to give the profile name okay and 
After extracting the temp profile, you initialize your web driver object, right? Web driver driver equals to new Firefox driver. Now, when you write this, a Firefox window will open up, right? But I need to tell Firefox that open up this profile. So I just I pass over this profile into the constructor of Firefox driver class. If you look in the documentation of Firefox driver class, so go ahead and you write download Selenium. Okay. So you go to the Selenium downloads page and you go to the javadoc link out here right and out here you will have the class known as firefox driver ok in this firefox driver class you will be able to see that there is a constructor called Firefox driver, okay, who's, who is expect, who is accepting the object of the Firefox profile class which we have created here. So when you run this now, you will see the browser with the profile temp opening up and that will have the Gmail bookmark. So similarly, in this profile, in this particular profile, if I go and install Firebug, okay, hold on, I'm just telling you something. What happens is that when we do testing, okay, the script fails at some point of time, okay, and we realize that we don't have Firebug Firefox profile in the Firefox which Selenium is launching. So we want the Firefox, uh, the Firebug, to be actually present in the Firefox profile with Selenium launches, right? So for that you need to use this profiling, you need to create your own profile, you need to install Firebug in it and then you need, then you can run that particular Firefox profile, okay? Hold on. So this way when the script starts the browser, okay, that particular browser will always have the Firefox profile in it and you can actually um, investigate that, right? So, okay, now if you run this, hold on. If you open the temp profile, okay, hold on just a minute, why did the, just give me one minute. Yeah, it's over, almost over. Restart. Yeah, I have the Firebug now in this particular profile. In Selenium, when I open this profile, so this will have Firebug installed in it. So this way I can actually in real time I can actually investigate my web pages, right? So this Firefox profile is there and in this the Firebug is there, right? So this is the concept of Firefox profiling. This is not there in I, this is not there in Chrome, 
when i or chrome is launched by selenium right it it launches the normal profile which you have on your machine okay it launches just the normal profile which you have on your machine it never creates a new profile and it never launches a new profile okay so now once we are done with profiling and all everything okay now what happens the same example gmail right i'll just create a new class called as gmail2 okay if you log in into gmail and if you try to open any mail you will not be able to do it as of now it's not so easy i'll tell you how to do that fine but right now don't try to do it it's a lot of stuff involved in it basically lot of frames are there so when i tell you the concept of frames you will be able to do it right so in uh, gmail.java what we had done was uh, i had just created the firefox driver and i was just going to gmail okay now after going to gmail if you, if i want to extract the title of the page then the command is driver dot get title this will give you the title of the page fine and after that suppose i am entering the username right so okay now if the username is not present okay if the username is not present on the gmail website what will happen okay the answer to this comes from the concept of exception handling in java right so in java if you i'll just create a new class called as exception handling okay we'll stop after the concept of exception handling and i'll just take a normal question and answer session okay now in java if i write over here int i equals to 100 divided by 2 and i run the code it will work fine if i print over here system dot out dot print and an a and after that i write system dot out dot print and an b if i am typing a and b over here and i am running the code it prints a and b but what if i do like this 100 divided by 0 if i run this code you will get an exception known as arithmetic exception divided by 0 and a will be printed but b b will not be printed so what is happening is that the code is ending abruptly the code it is stopping abruptly okay so what we do is that we use the concept of exception handling now in our script if our script is executing and if an element is not present on the page an exception will come known as the element not found exception there are lot of exceptions in java like file not found arithmetic exception array index out of bound exception there are lot of exception database exceptions are there if database connectivity is failing in java right so for every uh, thing which is not a desired thing we have an exception related to it okay so now the problem is that if an exception comes up in one line the code abruptly ends similarly if the script is running and if the code if error comes on one particular line the script will just stop okay it will not execute further on so to recover from that we we want that the error should be reported okay and the script should continue running normally for that we use the concept of exception handling so give a try catch block like this try block and a catch block like this and i'll type error over here okay so now when you run this it prints a error and b so what happens is that if the error comes on this line 
the control it moves inside the cache block it prevents error but it recovers from the error and continues further so in case i am clicking on a link on this line and that link is not present out here you can report the error okay and this exception e what is this exception is an inbuilt class okay when you come across a very undesired condition fine uh, very under, undesired uh, place in the program the exception object exception is thrown and the object of this class is automatically created if i write over here e dot print stack trace this will print the complete error if you run this this will print arithmetic exception divided by 0 okay so right so this is like um this is how you handle the exceptions okay there can be many kinds of exceptions exceptions if you don't want your code to end abruptly then you can use a try catch block okay in try block you write all the lines which are capable of throwing an error in catch block you can catch the exceptions okay and report the error we'll do that we'll do that once we study test ng or the j unit framework but always remember that um, you have exceptions in java okay so um right